Hi friends, Margot Jean here and welcome to Did You Art? This is the channel for people who don't take themselves or their artwork too seriously. So today we are going to do another little book review, quick little video. As you know, I am as equally obsessed with buying art books as I am with art supplies. And I always try to focus on finding books from authors or artists that I don't really know, that I'm not familiar with, because I like to see other styles, I like to see new techniques, um, get some tips, get some hints about different ways to improve my composition, my color mixing, things like that. And that was one of the reasons why I purchased this book, The Essence of Watercolor by Hazel Sohn. And this book I got on Amazon, I'll go ahead and I'll put the link down below. It's a gorgeous book, I actually read all of the copy in it. Sometimes I'll just buy a book and look at the pictures, but this one I actually went through and you'll see I actually highlighted some tips that really stood out to me. So just a little bit about the author. Hazel Sohn is a popular and successful artist who divides her studio time between London and Cape Town, exhibiting her work widely. She has her own gallery in Fulham, London, and she is one of the art experts in the popular Channel 4 TV series, Watercolor Challenge. Hazel Sohn is also the author of the very successful Learn to Watercolor Quickly, Learn to Paint People Quickly, and Watercolor Rainbow, also published by Batsford. So, I may have to toss these books into my Amazon cart just because I do love this book and I'm willing to bet her other books are equally as fabulous. So let's just do a quick little flip through so you can see what's in here. Beautiful illustrations throughout the entire book, all of her own original artwork. I just love her style because she's so free. She really knows how to utilize brush strokes uh, especially first brush strokes. She talks a lot in this book about how the first brush stroke or the early brush strokes to your painting are the most important and how when possible you should just leave those brush strokes as the foundation for your painting rather than going back and making corrections and trying to um, alter the color flow or the water flow in any way. So really, really good tips. So just the contents, you've got the appeal of watercolor being transparent. So she talks about the transparency of watercolor, the fusion of color, the way of the brush, playing the right note, painting the light, open for manipulation, the kiss of simplicity, learning to see, and then she's got a nice little gallery in the back of some of her pieces. So each section, each chapter, I should say, starts out with this gorgeous full page photo of one of her pieces. This chapter talks about the peel of watercolor. It's really just an overview of um, what the medium is, how it works. Again, lay it and leave it. That's that, um, her motto. That's what I was talking about as soon as you lay it. If it's good, don't touch it. Don't try to uh, fix what ain't broke, I guess you could say. <laughs> Um, talks a little bit about different techniques. Here it looks like she's done a salt bloom. I call it the salt bloom. It's where you put salt on watercolor while it's still wet and it does this really cool effect here. But you can see her, her style in all of her paintings. It's just very loose. It's very fluid. It's very free. It honestly looks like she doesn't use pencils, but she does because you can see a little bit of pencil mark, but it really it really, her work gives the impression that she just kind of goes for it immediately with the paint, as you can see in this photo here. So this chapter is all about being transparent, talks about uh, the different types of pigments, transparent versus opaque. For example, I thought this was interesting. The transparent pigments remain transparent, however thickly they are mixed. They are bright and clear, and they can be overlaid in successive glazes without losing transparency. They can be mixed together without losing clarity and, in concentration, form deep, clear darks. The opaque colors are strong or brilliant in hue and have great covering power. They can be used to add brilliance to a wash or change the tone of the picture. So I'm still kind of a noob watercolorist, if you can even call me a watercolorist. And I was kind of struggling with determining the difference between a transparent watercolor and an opaque watercolor. So this might just be a no brainer to you, but for me that was kind of uh, life changing to be honest. <laughs> I do not pretend to know what I am talking about. This talks about brilliance and radiance, how to get that 
in your pieces. Beautiful artwork. Talks about layering color, staining, different tones, different hues. This was a really important section to me, watching the paint dry, it's called, because I'm very impatient, especially because I've got a lot going on during the day, right? I just kind of want to hurry things up. So it says, to ensure unsullied transparency, the underlying color must be completely dry before another layer is brushed over the top. The best way to check uh, paint is to, the best way to check paint is dry the, let's try this again, right? The best way to check to see if paint is dry is to view the paper from an angle where the light shines on the surface. If it is damp, it will shine. If it is dry, it will be matte. If the paper is buckled, then the watercolor is probably still drying. Again, might seem super obvious. I'm very impatient and sometimes I'll see my water. Oh, here, let's show you this like this, you can see that the paper's kind of buckled a little bit, it's kind of folding up. It looks like it's dry to me, but it's not. I can kind of feel underneath that it's still a little damp. And the old me would have just gone ahead and gone right in and started going over it with my paint pen or my Micron. Uh-uh, she's all about teaching us to just wait, wait, wait. If you think it's dry, keep waiting, wait a little more. So this is about maintaining transparency, not getting carried away with your colors or your washes. She primarily uses red, yellow, and blue as her main colors in her paintings, which I thought was interesting. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece right there. And what's cool, at the end of each chapter, she's got this little section called Explore. And it's always on the topic that pertains to the chapter well, it's not a full uh, tutorial, it's not like a tutorial watercolor book. She does have little, uh, I guess you could call them exercises or little doses of inspiration so you can do these yourself. Like paint the many petals with overlapping brush marks. And then she's got little samples here. Paint the stem of the leaves by layering brush strokes. So just fun, really easy exercises that you could do in your spare time. But again, this isn't like a full blown tutorial book. I feel like this book is good for people who have experience with watercolor that have used it for a certain amount of time. If you're brand new and you've never even tried using watercolor, this might not be the book for you. You might want to do one uh, or buy a book that's a little more geared toward beginners. That being said, just the photos in here of her pieces, they're very inspiring. So maybe if you are a beginner and you're just kind of looking to get that spark going, this might be a good kind of eye candy book for you. So this chapter talks about uh, colors, the blending of colors, taking control of your water, of your colors, of your tones, about the timing, intensity, um, too much water in the second wash, how it'll flood into the first wash, and push the pigment grains away, something that I experience all the time. Beautiful, beautiful landscape. She's really got a nice, mix of subjects that she paints from people to plants to landscapes buildings this one talks about back runs so again these are kind of at least in my opinion advanced techniques like back runs occur when too much water is added into the previous wash and typically i would th think that, that that's a bad thing but she explains how you can use that to your advantage and actually incorporate that as a technique into your painting Another little explore section. This is something that I definitely want to do because I'm growing these in my backyard and I'm always struggling with getting the um, petals right so it looks like they're three dimensional and not just some flat blob. This talks about the way of the brush, how to hold the brush, how to use the brush. No surprise that she's got a big spread here, two pages about leaves because when you're creating leaves, it really comes down to how you are managing the brush, putting it down, picking it back up on the paper. Maybe we'll do a video about that. I'm not sure. Shaping the stroke, how you can kind of move your brush, twist it to create these cool organic shapes, which are perfect for making these fall leaves. Beautiful. Talking about the size of your brush, if you have a big painting, what size brush you should use, if you have a smaller painting, um, the size that would be best for that. 
edge of the stroke. I just adore these little penguins. This could be an awesome 10 minute exercise too. Just little penguins hanging out, doing different poses. Dry brush marks, again, I feel like this is more of an advanced technique, so I have not done this. It says, despite its name, it is not made with either a dry brush or a dry paint. It is created by lightly brushing the paper with the side of a thinly loaded brush. The less pressure used, the less paint is released, and the rougher the paper, the more fragmented the stroke will appear. And this is a great example, as you can see, that this technique, this dry brush technique, has created this effect of reflection on the water. It gives it dimension and it gives it some nice highlights. This section talks about layering washes. For some, re some reason, I'm very freaked out about layering. I'm afraid that's gonna turn into a big pool of mud. Leaving well enough alone. She talks about that a lot in this book. Wetting the paper, doing wet on wet. First wash is always the, the freshest. Just laying down your color and leaving it. Again, another little explore section. This one seems to be geared toward people, doing people while focusing on your brush stroke. This chapter, chapter four, is all about tones and values. So it talks about the difference between tone or colors and hues, really defines all those different uh, concepts. This is great, this is her father. That's a great portrait. Building tone, different ways that you can build tone with washes, details. Um, oh, I liked this. I wanted to actually share this, this little quote in this section with you. The details that become indistinguishable when you half close your eyes to judge tonal values are mostly those that are unnecessary in the watercolor. There is no need to tell the viewer everything. We know how the world looks, but we have never seen your painting before. Your vision, your interpretation is the appeal and the way that you use the watercolor is the attraction. So I like that because sometimes, at least for me, I feel like when I'm sitting down and painting something, I need to get every single little detail included in the painting. Whereas she's saying, we all know what the world looks like. We've seen it, we've been there. Um, what was what's really interesting to the viewer is your interpretation of it and how you are processing the colors, how you're processing the details, what details you're leaving out, what is your perception of that subject or of that scene. So it really just kind of comes down to the mind of the artist. That's what we want to see. We want to see into your mind. Some more techniques here about being bold with your brush strokes, especially when they're loaded with pigment. Another little section here. This seems to focus more on landscape and rocks, which makes sense because a lot of uh, the components of painting rocks has to do with very bold, saturated strokes. This is about light, so this ch uh, chapter is the opposite. Um, of having bold, dark, rich colors. This is all about leaving white space on your paper. As you can see here, white shapes. The direction of the light, knowing where your light source is. Where's the sun? Where's the lamp? Contrast, tinted light. I like this, it reminds me of like an Instagram filter, the old school Instagram filters. White paint. Um, I'm trying to get away from using white paint. I'm trying to get more into the habit of leaving actual white paper showing, but she does say that if you are gonna use white paint, titanium white is fully opaque and it has a greater covering power than Chinese white. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I love this, I love that. I really wanna do the moon. That's gonna be a fun project. We'll have to do that in a video. Open to manipulation. Um, just talking about if you need to fix something, if there's a mistake. And I really like that she had the courage to share her mistakes with us. Here she is, a super professional, well-known artist, and she talks about in this section how she actually screwed up the legs on this dog. You can Maybe you can see him in the camera, but the mess up is over here, but the corrected version are these that you can see right here. But 
it works because it kind of gives the dog movement. Like it looks like the dog is turning around. So she talks about embracing your mistakes, not having to start all over from scratch. There are ways to fix little mistakes, right? It's kind of like what Bob Ross said. There's no mistakes, just happy little accidents. Lifting color, scratching it off where you actually go in and scratch off the pigment with like an exacto knife. Have not done that yet. This is really cool. So these are all screwed up paintings or paintings that she didn't really like. And what she does is just kind of cut them up until it looks like little like five by five squares and then makes this collage, this mosaic of different uh, aspects of the painting. So that way it becomes new again. It becomes a good painting, very creative. Another explore section, all about simplicity, knowing your focus. This is kind of cool. She blurred everything out except the light of the umbrella. She wanted the focus to be on that light, that natural sunlight. Deciding about your composition, where to put what. Beautiful, love this. Less is more. How this is literally like just a handful of brush strokes, but you can still see that this is a mama zebra guarding her baby zebra. Explore simplicity. So just really getting free, learning to see. So this talks a little bit about um, looking at shapes, painting the negative space, really looking at um, tones. She does a little, is it this one here, where she just puts her, her pen or her pencil down on paper and doesn't look down on her, pa her paper and doesn't lift up her tool. She just draws while looking at whatever it is that she's drawing. And then when she's done, she'll lift it up, look down, and that's what she goes with. A very freeing experience. Positive and negative shape marks. Yeah, here it is. Seeing and drawing. The best way to, to train your observational skills is to practice contour drawing and to do this without looking down at your paper. And that's what she did. She just drew the outline, didn't look at it, and voila, it's gorgeous. Okay, so this is just little tips, tricks, changing the colors, and then we get into the gallery and the index. So there's about, so it looks like 128 pages in this book. It was 19.95 list price. I think I paid a little less because we're Amazon Prime members, so you could probably get it cheaper. But if you're interested in watercolor, if you wanna get free and loose with your brush strokes, learn a little bit more about um, color and washes and painting uh, the negative space, leaving white space on your page. This is a great book. It's very inspiring. There's a lot of visual eye candy in here that I think will inspire you. And yeah, I highly recommend it. Really good bedtime reading as well. So thanks again for checking out this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. I also recommend that you subscribe to my channel as I will be posting new videos every single week. And I would also love to invite you to join my Facebook group, Did You Art? I'll go ahead and I'll put a link down below. It's a positive community full of artists who don't take themselves or their artwork too seriously. Until next time, take it easy and have a great day.